As writers, we sometimes tend toward silly routines. Writing in hotels, drinking sherry at sunrise, doing push-ups while writing, and needing to have a cow in our field of vision to be able to write all of it, to call on our muse where creativity is supposedly born. And then there's Lee Bardugo. She doesn't do any strange practices, she doesn't need superstition to inspire her, she just focuses on what's important in her routine, and writes, and writes, and writes. And since tomorrow, her long-anticipated sequel to Ninth House, a book called Hellbent, is finally coming out. I wanted to try out her simple but effective writing routine and see what it could do for me. Because recently I've been putting together a new series in a new world, and frankly I've been confronted with so many possibilities that it's become overwhelming. So I wondered if I could use Lee Bardugo's routine to write a short story in this world, explore, and gain a better understanding of my new world in the process. So the first thing I want to talk about with regard to Lee's routine is not specifically part of the routine, but it was something really interesting that I discovered from researching her, which I think would benefit you as well. And this is the concept of setting deadlines for yourself. And the way this shows up for Lee is that when she was writing her first completed book, she had been struggling over and over again to finish what she was writing. She would fall in love with the idea in the beginning, and then she would fall out of love with the idea and have trouble taking the book all the way through the finish line. But she finally decided, I'm going to finish a book. I just want to finish something and she set a deadline for her birthday and after all that struggle she finally ended up finishing her first book and I think this concept of setting deadlines is important as well so I'm going to be setting a deadline for myself of finishing this short story today we'll see how that works out it's going to be quite a bit of writing. The first thing that I need to focus on is actually coming up with an idea for the story because I don't really have one right now. So what I'm going to do is something I learned that Lee actually does. She uses podcasts, whether it's podcasts about food or history or whatever, to get ideas that will become the seeds of stories. And recently I was listening to Hardcore History by Dan Carlin. It's a really popular podcast about history and specifically the Wrath of the Khans, so about the Mongols during the time of Genghis Khan. And there was one thing that really just popped out at me that was such an interesting piece of history. And basically what it was, was the Mongols were kind of getting close to this territory that was part of Russia. And there were these Russian princes. There was also this more tribal group that would raid the Russian land. So they had this really bad relationship between the two of them. So the Mongols are coming up and they start encroaching on the lands of this more tribal raiding community. So the raiders send this envoy to talk with the Russian princes. And they say that there's this like really powerful force that is pushing them back. And they they want to ally with the Russian princes. But of course, since their relationship is so sour, the Russian princes have no desire to ally with them and they don't even really believe them. And this really stood out to me because I feel like this sort of dynamic would be really interesting in a story. So that is what I'm thinking of doing. I have had the seed of an idea in my mind for a little bit and I just need to find an actual short story from within it. However, if I'm gonna write something about it, I definitely need to get more clear on it. And that is where the next of Lee's process fits in. What she says she does is she just tries to narrow her idea down into one to two sentences because by doing this, by being this concise, it forces you to become very clear about the idea. So that's what I'm going to do starting off with this little kernel of an idea that I had and let's see what I come up with. With so many possibilities for this world and only a vague understanding of it, it took over an hour of brainstorming and working with my idea before I finally settled on a premise. So after a bunch of figuring out a little bit better what this idea was going to be and then creating a premise to clarify it, I think I've settled on the actual premise. So here's what I've got for now. After his older brother is killed by technologically advanced southern invaders, the chieftain's remaining son must negotiate a desperate political alliance with their former foes to re-enable the ancient magic both coalitions once shared. Unfortunately, the hard part with this premise for me is that there's like a ton of world building that might be involved. I've kind of been thinking about the seed of this idea for a little while now. The magic system in this is going to be really cool. I have a really cool seed for it. I need to figure out the actual system itself and I'm going to be doing that pretty soon in another video, but let's not get off track here. Leave our do go writing routine. 
Okay, so that's my premise basically, and this premise is only a small piece of the larger story that I want to tell. I don't even know if this is going to be part of the actual novel, which is why I wanted to just write this little short story, and I'm going to kind of use it to learn about this world a little bit more and get a better understanding of some of these characters. So I'm just going to focus here on what I said, like the political alliance aspect. That should be more than enough for a short story. It's going to be pretty difficult actually to even keep it in short story length. So I'm going to have to really be strict with making sure that I'm not letting it get too out of control, which takes us directly to our next step, outlining. So the way that Lee Bardugo actually outlines her stories is using first of all, three act structure and second, a 12 step story structure that she learned in college to figure out the basics of a story. That's kind of how she she starts off. However, since I'm just writing a short story, I don't think that I'm going to be able to use a three act structure for it. I mean, I guess I could, but the beats are going to come so close together that I'm not really sure how to organize it. And since I don't really know her 12 step story beat structure anyway, I think I'm just going to compromise a little bit and use the mice quotient instead since I've already used that in the past to outline a short story and since it's a simpler structure that will allow me to have a more loose understanding of the story. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to start with the actual outline and I'm not going to go too in depth here. I just want to figure out a few sentences to describe the overall story and then maybe break it down into a few scenes. Okay, so I came up with a very basic outline here. The outline was actually kind of difficult to come up with. I really have trouble limiting myself to such a small number of pages and words. And I think that's just because this is actually really part of a bigger story. It's not really a short story. It's just the behind the scenes that would be occurring during the larger story that I want to tell. That's been kind of a difficult aspect to get in check and I've had trouble actually mapping out this story. So I'm not 100% sure on my outline, but I do think I have enough at least to continue on to the next step. And that brings us back to something that Lee Bardugo does during her writing process, which is she focuses first on the scenes before changing things into chapters. Now, because my story is so short, scenes is definitely the way to go for me as well. So I'm gonna work this out and try to figure out what the scenes are for this outline. And then I can actually get into some writing. I was able to figure out five-ish scenes, including a little resolution. So now I'm nearly ready to start actually writing the story. And at this point, you may be a little bit curious about the world building aspects because I haven't done really any world building in this world. And you know, my natural inclinations, if you've seen any other videos on this channel, is that I would want to do a little bit of world building. However, Lee Bardugo prefers not to get too hung up on world building and says not to let world building distract you from the actual writing. Now, she doesn't say not to do any world building at all. However, she likes to start with the characters and the plot and then derive some world building from those. And then those things will kind of play off each other and influence each other as the story goes. But because of that, I'm not going to do any world building beyond any of the other things I've already done in thinking about this world previously. So I'm just going to move straight on to actually writing. However, I need to get some charge for my computer. So I'm actually going to go back to my room and we'll do the writing in there so let's get going and actually before I go back to my room I have to go to the bathroom real quick so I'll see you in a bit I do have one more mindset thing about the way that Lee Bardugo thinks about writing before we get started she talks about the concept of writing zeroth drafts which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with but basically if you don't know the zeroth draft is just completely disregarding any sort of editing while you're writing that initial draft, just focusing on getting the story down in whatever form it is. And for Lee, it's basically an elaborate outline in which she fills in all the gaps in the story that were left after her outlining with three act structure. So even though I already pretty much write with this mindset of trying to not let the internal editor take over while I'm writing my first draft, I'm going to just completely take this on and hopefully it will aid me in my writing. So it is 9.42 and I have finished writing 
mystery number of words. As you may know, I normally do track my word count. However, Lee Bardugo says that she doesn't pay attention to the words as she's writing because she gets distracted by it and it throws off her focus. So I actually hid the word count from Microsoft Word just to make sure that I'm not even tempted to look at it. And actually, I'm finding that it works really well for me because normally I can find myself checking the word count. So I actually like writing without the word count visible. Hmm. I never thought about that before, even as something to do, so this has actually been pretty useful in that regard already. But even though I'm not monitoring words, I am, you know, sort of monitoring scenes. I have managed to finish the first two scenes of the story, so I have four more to go, but things are coming along nicely. I'm getting a decent idea of the way this character is going to act, his voice and the story, and, you know, he's the only POV, this is a short story. <laughs> I don't want to complicate things too much here now. But yes, I've been making some great progress here, and I feel like it's all coming together a little bit. I do have a lot left to go. However, I usually eat breakfast around 10 o'clock, and today I'm feeling rather hungry already. So I'm gonna go eat some breakfast and then I'll be back to talk a little bit more about Lee Bardugo's process as well as continue with writing this short story. I was slowly figuring out more about the story world and building a better understanding for it. So it is 12.05 and I have written 12 pages so far. So you may have noticed that I disabled my Wi-Fi and the reason why is because Lee Bardugo recommends eliminating all sorts of distractions that you can. And she especially focuses on the distraction of something like social media. She says that it puts you in the mindset of self-editing and since self-editing is incompatible with the zero draft style writing and with creativity in general, she recommends to eliminate these distractions while you are writing. And this has been working well for me because just knowing that I don't have the internet there to research stuff it makes it easier for me to say no like even with that temptation of the internet being there it can be so easy to just swipe over and then start typing a question into Google immediately but if the internet is off I can't do that as quickly and it can give you that moment to just get back focused on your writing and realize that you can set off this little bit of research until later. And this is going pretty well for me. I have already finished writing four of the scenes. I actually ended up expanding one of the scenes into two because the beginning part ended up becoming its own sort of scene and then I had to write the original scene as the next one. So I have seven scenes total that I'm planning on writing and that means that I have three left to go. These should be some pretty interesting ones. The next one I'm actually looking forward to. It's gonna be fun. And then the one after that, it's gonna be like the climactic scene and then we have some sort of small resolution so tons of good stuff to be writing next so let's just get back into it and then we'll talk a little bit more about Lee Bardugo's process <laughs> So I just finished working through the fifth scene. Now what I've got left is the climax and the resolution. However, I want to take a second here to tell you about another aspect of Lee Bardugo's process, and that is that she uses music to help her stay focused. And luckily for me, she really likes listening to an artist named Ludovico Einaudi, who I also like as well. And the way that she does this, well, at least what she said in the 88 Cups of Tea interview that I listened to, is that she'll listen to a bunch of songs by him at first, but then as she's getting a better idea for the story, she'll just pick one of the songs and she'll just loop that song over and over and over and over and over again. And I've also done this before of just looping one song and I found that it's really useful for me for getting in this like zone of focus because the music just fades in the background and it really just becomes like this mood music that you don't even really notice. I found this to be helpful and I actually really liked doing this with Ludovico's songs. And the one that I was listening to is a song called DNA. So making great progress, I really enjoyed writing this last scene and drawing out the tension in it. And now I have two more scenes left, one of them being the climax. And I already thought about how I want this to play out. So I think I know how it's going to work given how I've changed the scenes as the story has been developing. So I'm basically ready to jump right back in and finish this up. And then we'll talk about one last little bit of Lee Bardugo's routine and mindset in a bit.
Okay, so I have finished the zero the draft first draft, whatever you want to call it. But this was actually really fun, especially that climactic scene was so much fun. Oh my God, it was pretty emotional actually. And the music was so good in the background. I was like, oh, so good. I feel really good about finishing that draft. I'm going to talk about this in a second here from the context of Lee Bardugo. But you know, when you're in the middle of writing, sometimes it can feel a little bit difficult. Like, oh my God, I still have a lot left. <laughs> and it can feel a little overwhelming in that way but I'm happy that I continued to work through it because I feel like I ended up with something really interesting and I have a much better idea of the characters in this story now and I think it's gonna be really fun I'm excited to write this anyway though you know I don't want to get too off track here. Let's keep it on topic, John. So as far as things regarding her process and writing like Lee Bardugo today, the main things that I really liked were, first of all, turning out word count. That was really useful for me. Like I don't usually do that. And that's something that I need to start doing because I can get a little bit too obsessed with word counts. Second, using the one song in the background is just killer. I love that. I want to keep doing that as well. And you know, maybe throw in some more Ludovico and also using podcasts as inspiration. I've only recently started doing this, but this is like a bomb tip because you get so many good ideas from studying history. Like there's really dramatic stuff that happened in history and it can be really good seeds for stories. Honestly, I really liked this routine. This is totally my style, really minimalist, just focusing on the important stuff, like actually writing and not getting obsessed with all these like minor little details that might not be that important. And also talking about the stuff that might actually matter that you might not have thought about before, like turning out word counts. That is something that I've never even thought about doing and I didn't even know you could do it in Word until today. Really happy that I went through this process. Researching Lee Bardugo was a ton of fun. Reading The Ninth House was also a ton of fun. And I'm looking forward to being able to read Hellbent very soon. Now, I want to leave you with a quote from Lee that resonated with me so much that I literally slowed down the podcast so that I could type it down word for word. And this is pertaining to Lee's thoughts on the challenges of creation. Sometimes, I think all of the questions we ask about process, all of the books, all of that, the reason we're obsessed with it is because we hope that somehow, somewhere, something will spare us the pain of writing a book. Feeling lost when you're in it, feeling stuck when you're in it, and feeling incompetent when you're in it. Because if writing is your calling, then why does it not only feel like a job, but like a job you're terrible at? This is the reality for every author I know, and one of the best things about becoming a published author has been meeting many of my idols and learning that they all struggle with this feeling, with the process of getting a book to be a story that they want to tell. So let yourself off the hook and keep writing, keep revising, and keep going back to it.